This is a short presentation showing the steps of the physical assessment of the nose, mouth, and throat. In terms of subjective history, we're going to be asking questions about nasal discharge, if they've been sick recently, are they experiencing any type of sinus pressure, sinus pain, do they have a history of allergies, um, bloody nose, epistasis, um, has there been any trauma? More recently, altered smell and taste has been more relevant due to COVID, but we would ask them if there's been any changes in smell, if they've had um, acute rhinitis or just allergic rhinitis. Um, and if there's been history of trauma, we would also ask them about, you know, deviated uh, septum or any situations where they've had nasal surgery, a break in their um, nose, or any area of disfigurement of their face around the nose. The mouth and throat, I'm also going to be asking about recent illnesses, um, underlying disease. Do they notice sores, lesions? Do their gums bleed? Do they have history of gingivitis? Um, or is this something new? Is it could point to maybe a hematological issue? Uh, toothache, hoarseness in their throat, difficulty swallowing, which is dephagia, altered taste, Smoking or alcohol consumption, you want to also be able to quantify that, so ask of how much. And what are their self-care behaviors? So do they practice good dental care? Do they have dental appliances, dentures, braces? Um, and how often do they see their dentist? When you're working with children, you'll ask about salivation, which you will see excessive salivation in periods of teething, uh, you will also note the difference between their teeth, temporary versus permanent. You might ask them how many teeth they've lost so far. And um, in terms of their nose, you want to make sure that uh, if there is any discharge runny nose, you know, is it allergic rhinitis or are they experiencing something more acute? For the pregnant female, due to the activity of blood supply, so we have increased blood supply. Sometimes this will cause nasal stuffiness, epistasis, hyperemic gums, or bleeding gums. With the aging adult, they tend to have more incidence of diminished smell and taste as you get older. That is not associated to things like COVID. And you're going to see some atrophic changes of their tissue and dentation changes. Now we're moving on to the objective. When you are preparing a patient, make sure you get them in good position. You want them to be sitting and you might have to tilt their head back a little bit in turn times of this assessment. If you have an otoscope available, you can put the short wide tipped nasal speculum attachment on it, um, or you can just use your pen light. You may need at times tongue blades, cotton gauze pads, gloves. If you need to palpate anything inside the mouth, the only time you would do that is if there was a lesion or a mass or something abnormal. And in some cases, you might even need a long stem light attachment for the otoscope. So first you will inspect and palpate the nose. You are checking the external nose for any skin issues, breaks, lesions. Uh, any masses, any abnormal uh, bindings of that skin. You're testing the patency of the nostril. And to do this, you're going to occlude one nostril, have them take a breath in, and occlude, um, occlude the other nostril, and have them take a breath in. Make sure that they're passing good air exchange from both nostrils. In the nasal cavity, you're checking to see the nasal septum and the nasal terminates, making sure that they're not red or pink or inflamed. You will be palpating around the sinus areas, so the frontal sinus and the maxillary sinuses, and you're just using your fingers to palpate. 
in those areas. And if you do have abnormality, tenderness, or your patient complains of a bit of pain, you might consider using translumination. You know, putting another uh, diffuse light and it can shine this red glow. And if it does, this is normal. If it comes from the light shining through the air and the healthy sinuses, you can see through. Now, if you don't see that projection of light, it could be that there's something in those sinus areas that are causing the, the congestion, the pressure, or the pain. You will be inspecting and palpating the lips, the teeth, the gums, and the tongue. Um, when you are inspecting the tongue, you can have your patient move their tongue up and down to the left and to the right, and so you're checking for strength as well. To, um, they, you can ask them to stick their tongue out. You will use the tongue depressor, a depressor to put pressure on their tongue as you're looking through to the back um, and around the buccal mucosa, which is just the your cheeks, the inside of your cheeks. You're checking that U-shaped area under the tongue, so as they lift their tongue up. And um, also, going back to the tongue depressor, as they're, you're putting pressure on their tongue, as they say, ah, you're looking at the uvula, and this is cranial nerve 10, and it should move up equally and upon phonation and that uh, phonation this is when they are saying uh. you're looking at the heart and the soft palate and you're going to assess their ability to swallow and check their gag reflex to so check their gag reflex if they don't automatically do that when you put the tongue depressor in their mouth you can also just lightly touch the back of their pharynx and this should elicit a gag reflex Sometimes you might have to offer your patient a little bit of water to make sure that the swallowing mechanism is intact. And that is cranial nerve 9 and 10. Lastly, with the throat, you're inspecting the back of that area and noticing if they have tonsils or not. You can see that the uvula is the structure that we will use as a landmark to grade our tonsils. If the tonsils are visible off from the sides, um, it's a one plus. If they are halfway between the two tonsillar pillars, this is a two plus. If they are touching the uvula, this is a three plus. And then we will rate it a four plus if they are touching each other. You can, again, use the tongue blade to press down the tongue so that you do have this visualization of the tonsils. Again, just barely touching that posterior pharyngeal wall to elicit the gag reflex. Your sample charting for this section would be to talk separately about the nose, the mouth, and the throat subjectively. So no history of discharge, sinus problems, obstruction, epistasis, or allergies. This patient has colds one to two times a year. They are usually mild. Fractured his nose during high school sports and was treated by a medical doctor. In terms of mouth and throat, there's been no pain, lesions, bleeding gums, toothaches, dysphagia, or hoarseness. Occasional sore throat with colds. Tossum, um, he had a, a tonsillectomy at eight years old. Smoked cigarettes one pack a day for nine years. Alcohol socially about two times a month. Visits the dentist annually. Sees the dental hygienist twice a year. Flosses daily and does not have any dental appliances. Now moving on to the objective, also delineating the difference between the nose, the mouth, and the throat. The nose is symmetric, no deformities or skin lesions. The nares are patent. Mucosa is pink. There's no discharge lesions or polyps. There's no subtle deviation perforations. The sinuses are without tenderness or uh, pain to palpation. The mouth, the patient can clench his teeth. Mucosa and gingiva are both pink. No masses or lesions. The teeth are all present, straight, and good repair. The tongue is smooth, pink. There's no lesions. It protrudes in midline with no tremors. The throat, the mucosa is pink. There's no lesions or exudates. The uvula rises midline on phonation. The tonsils are out, so in this case, you didn't grade them. And the gag reflex is present. Now, if there are tonsils on your patient, which the majority of our patients will have, then you will use the grading system to grade their tonsils.